Hey there guys, welcome back, or if you're new, hi, I am Laura, and in today's video we are giving this dining room a little bit of a winter makeover, getting it ready for Christmas, but at the same time, it needs a bit of work, but I actually started this one yesterday, because let me tell you, it's going to be a bit of a few days to get this, this room situated, so I'm going to insert that footage now, and then catch up with you in a bit. And today's video is in collaboration with the wonderful Squarespace and I'm going to talk more about their all-in-one platform later on in the video. And as you can see the dining room was in a bit of a state, we didn't have any heating in here originally so Ollie actually plumbed in this radiator for us which has given so much heat, it's amazing, but he also left all of the DIY tools all around. So that was a bit of an issue. We moved the table around to see if it would work while he was doing that. It just didn't seem to fit anywhere else in the room. And then you can see I've also been collecting all of my greenery over here to do all the foliage for Christmas. I have no idea why that lamp is there or that heater. And then we've got a load of Christmas stuff kind of just chucked in here, ready to go. And don't even get me started on those shelves. They are so cluttered. First things first, I got rid of all of the autumn in the room and then I had a really good clear out of all of the DIY pieces that just shouldn't have been in the dining room. Then I sorted out all the greenery and got to work with clearing and tidying the room. I always find the best way to do this is to take everything off the shelves, on cupboards, give it a really good clean down and then look at it afresh. Then when Ollie got home we could do the heavy lifting so we turned the table back around and we moved it out of the way because I was thinking I might centre the rug and try and centre the table but we gave this a really good go and it just didn't look as good I must admit. So we moved the bench which was originally in our living room over to the corner and this gave a really nice little seating area as well as getting rid of loads of other stuff from the dining room. And so this is where we are today. So the chest of drawers area is now empty because we've moved it over to the other side of the room. I actually really like it over there. I wasn't sure to begin with, but I think it just adds something to that space of the room and that was just really lacking. It just felt very unused and unloved. Obviously for Christmas, the Christmas tree will go here and look beautiful. We wanted to position the Christmas tree here because you'll be able to see it every time you walk past the door. Excuse that door that also needs a little bit of work. And hopefully it'll kind of like welcome you into the house. I'd originally thought that it was going to go over in this corner, but to be honest, I felt like it was going to get a little bit unseen over there. Even so at the dining table, you wouldn't particularly see it. So we decided to move this one, which was in our living room over here. And I think it works so well because you can sit there and look out the window and a very ugly anyway, but subscribe if you want to see us make that over in the spring. We actually made these a few years ago and they worked out so well. This is with scaffolding planks and then we just bought these legs to go on them. And we also did this one, which was just gonna, like, gonna be unused. I thought it would be the perfect place to be able to sit and place your coffee whilst you're looking outside. And then this one here probably doesn't sit the best that it could, but we're working with what we have right now. And then if I turn around, we explained before, our dining room is over to the side because this is our only access to the garden because we have a lodger in the back of our house in the bedroom, which if you're totally confused by this point, I will put our renovation playlist below. So we need this access because we're still renovating in the house and it's much easier to be able to get everything in and out of the shed, all of our tools through this kind of little runway. Now, ideally I'd love to have more of a love seat here and another sofa here, but we're on a really tight budget with this room because it will be renovated in the future. So for Christmas, we're gonna deck it as beautifully and nicely as we can on a budget. So hopefully this video will give you guys a little bit of inspiration on how to re room to give it a little bit more love. Now the most simple, cost-effective way is of course dried fruits. So I'm gonna be chopping these up 
chucking them in the oven and you're supposed to put them on pretty much at the lowest heat your oven can possibly go for quite a long time i'm going to be keeping an eye on them hopefully whilst we make over the rest of the room but i want to get them on because they could be on for quite a little while now i'm going to do my lines kind of as they are just with strips through them and then also slice them and mostly the oranges i'm just going to slice but i'll show you the process as we do it this smells absolutely divine and is a wonderful classic kind of traditional way to decorate for christmas and also not just decorate but if you're a fan of festive foods they're great for stuff like cocktails as well so while they are in the oven i am going to get a start with the garland i've got all my lovely leftover eucalyptus here. I've also got quite a bit of the Christmas tree that I culled um, and some other bits and pieces from foraging. But I'm actually gonna be documenting the whole process on my website, which is actually powered by Squarespace who are sponsoring this section of today's video. And I have been loving having another platform where I can document all of these things. If you are new around here, then you may not know that Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can create or design a website or a blog. It is so easy to do. They have so many wonderful templates that make it a really enjoyable experience because you end up having something that just looks so professional when in fact you've been able to do it all yourself. So for this blog post that I'm doing on the dining room, I'll be able to set it up on the workflow system, which means I can schedule, draft, review, and then publish for the future if I want to. And they don't just do blog posts, you can also have an e-commerce site, so whether it is business or personal. And if you are somebody who really loves working on a tablet or a phone, all of their sites can also be optimized on mobile or tablet to adapt and fit to any screen that somebody may be viewing your content on. This year I know so many people are starting up new hobbies or businesses or if it's just personal to keep in touch with family abroad. If you're wanting to set up your own website then I would really recommend Squarespace. They offer a free trial and then when you're ready to set up your website you can use my link which is squarespace.com slash Laura to get 10% off your first website or domain. It's such a wonderful way to get creative, have some fun, and also look back on memories. But definitely make sure to check mine out. So hopefully in that blog post you'll get a little less scatterbrain Laura because unfortunately that is a lot what I'm when I'm creative, I'm very all over the place. So the videos you're getting me truly as I am, but when I do the blog post, I'll sit down and think about it fully. With this garland, I'm going to be using the um, Christmas tree fur that I have probably as the main base. And if you watched my disaster of a read, see that's what I say about my scatter creativeness, then I'm basically using, or I'm gonna use the same, same kind of technique as that, which is really super easy. Honestly, anybody could do this, head out into your garden, head out into your local park or wherever you can to forage some greenery. And you simply just need to make little piles. So I'm gonna cut down mine slightly, trying to avoid my fingers this time and just make some little bundles. So I'm actually gonna make sure that my end bundle has quite a lot to it, because this is the bundle that will be hanging off the edge of the mantle. And I am <laughs> all for go big or go home when it comes to greenery. I feel like the more you put in, the better it always looks. Well, I know they say less is more, but I don't, think, don't feel like it is with Christmas foliage just oh that's the alarm just go for it but you can kind of see where i'm building that one out there better just check the oranges and we'll get back to this i have just flipped those over and put them in for a little bit longer so now literally i'm just going to take my bunch on the first one i will tie a knot a nice tight knot because you don't want it getting loose or if you have wire, you can simply just wrap it round, but you can do this with anything. I'm using wire, but you could also do it with twine. You want to make sure that you keep it attached to whatever thread you have it on, because that's gonna build the base of your garland. I'm gonna make my Christmas wish. Yes. In the cake. Okay, I'll be ready at four. Okay. okay. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs> so 
So I've furnished two and just evening off all of the ends there. And then I'm just going to, I mean, you can do this number of ways. You could make all of the different bunches separately and then add them together, but I like things quick and easy. So I'm just gonna place my bunch on the top of the previous one there and then wrap it round just like we did with the wreath. And then as you can see, that is how you repeat it and continue it to get the garlands. You can just about see what all the foliage there is gonna end up looking like. Hopefully, I don't run out of this stuff. Of course, it's starting to get dark already, but my garland is getting there. So I've actually popped it on the mantle to do the last few bits. I found that it gets quite delicate. So I've popped it on there um, to measure the size and stuff. And I'm just about there. But at this end, I always turn the last two around so that they fall down. And then I literally just stick in these last bits here to cover up that middle piece. You could cut it off in the middle and go the other way in the middle and fill it up, but I find it looks a little bit more natural to put it at the end. So yeah, this is what it's turning out like. Smells absolutely divine. I'm just gonna get those last few bits finished off. Then I might poke a little bit more eucalyptusin. I've just popped the lights on the garland, ignore them changing all the time. I'm not sure which remote they are, so I'm gonna to have to figure that out. I bought this tree skirt off of Amazon. It was literally the last one I could find yesterday. And now I'm gonna go and attempt to cut down the Christmas tree. If not, I'll have to wait till Ollie comes home, but I think I wanna get it done. Wish me luck. decorating the tree I wanted to keep it cheap which meant quite minimal so I have one pack of baubles which I'm attaching ribbon onto I think it just gives it a little bit more and adds something extra to the tree loads of pine cones which I'd collected and tester pots which I had left over and painted the pine cones white just a little dusting like snow to make them really pop on the tree and with the glue gun I also placed the same ribbon and some different ribbon in the same kind of colors onto the pine cones to be able to hang them Good morning guys, it may be a little bit noisier in here because it is tipping it down with rain. You can probably hear it on the roof above me. But this morning, we are gonna deck this table, make it all beautiful for Christmas, and I have roped in Ollie for the first thing. So I had a little idea last night and we had an experiment. And I think we've got a really cute little DIY. So let me show you what we're doing. So each year we actually celebrate Christmas at families. We don't host Christmas. And I'm always in charge of the table design. And I always do little um, like name placeholders or um, name cards for the table. And this year, I thought that we would go a little bit extra and make our own. So I was saying to Ollie that I really wanted to do something with the rosemary in the garden. And then we took it to the next level. Ollie decided to use some electrical wire. And this one here is electrical wire that we have sprayed gold. And as you can see here, this is the copper electrical wire. And Ollie actually twisted this one to make it a little bit thicker. We're just deciding um, kind of what size we want, if we want the twist 
or the single. Um, if we want it sprayed gold, this one's totally been sprayed gold, um, but we will show you the process now of how to make them. And I'm just gonna be placing these on each person's plate. So for this, you'll need some pliers. And we had electrical wire, but you could use anything that you like, but we have loads of this left over. So Ollie's just taking off the plastic at the top. And then this is so cool. I didn't know you could do this. He's just taking the wire that he wants and you can literally just rip it out. I would have spent ages doing this, but that's such a quick process. And while he's doing that, I am writing the letters as a sort of template for when the wiring is finished. Then to twist the wire, we used this hook. Ollie popped it into his drill and then I held the other end. So Ollie's just doing it here with the pliers. Here's my hand. So I'm gonna hold it really tight across the room. And then Ollie's got it in the drill and he's gonna twist it, which gives the twist effect. Obviously, if you don't have a drill, you can just use single wire or you could even do this by hand, but this is quite a quick process. And then simply when the wire is ready, you just gotta bend it round using your template. This can be a little bit fiddly. It does take a little bit of time, but it's well worth it. And then I'm using my glue gun again, which by the way has come in so handy. And I'm putting the little ribbons on the top of them. I decided it could be quite nice that people could use them as decorations on their Christmas tree so they could take them home after coming for dinner. Then for the table, I actually picked up loads of greenery from my florist because I wanted to support them, but equally you could go out foraging for a lot of this stuff. And I simply did exactly the same thing as I did with the garland. So you guys have seen it before. I didn't want to go through it too much, but actually with this one, I decided not to tie it together. So I just did the bundles and then kind of placed them on top of each other. Now these gorgeous runners are from my wonderful friend, Steph, who runs Wits Designs with her mum, and they are actually handmade in her studio in Norfolk. So they're screen printed, and she's used this like fabulous linen with this metallic gold. It's got the lovely pine cones. I just think it's so subtle, but beautiful. Perfect for Christmas, but you can also, I think, use it all year round. And I put two on the table so that I could seat four people. And I did make sure that I put cling film down the middle because I really didn't want to ruin them with the Foliage. But I'll link all her details down below because she's a wonderful small business that has so many lovely textile pieces. And then I just started creating the garland, popped on these gold charger plates, which were done elm. I think they were only one pound each, and then started putting all of the candles in. I nestled them kind of into the garland. To add a little bit of extra glamour, I wanted to have some flowers on the table, so I used these little glass jars and I just scattered them across the table with some roses and some heather and berries to make it look a little bit festive but at the same time add some luxury to the table too. This morning I just have a few more finishing touches from the room and then I'm going to show you what it's looking like now. This is a look back at what it was like before we gave it a little glow up. And I think now it is certainly glowing. And now we are ready to host Who Fancy is coming over. Hopefully in the new year that is something we will be able to do a little bit more. I hope you guys are well and enjoyed seeing this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys all in the next one.